Hey there, I'm Lisa Niven Kelly from Beeducation.com. And I'm Mel McKay with Beeducation.com. We just shot this great class over on Facebook Live, our Beeducation Live show, but we've edited it and archived it here for you to watch. If you hear us answering customer questions or talking to quest talking to customers, you can just ignore that. That was just stuff that was in the moment when we shot the class, but there's still so much great content here. Yeah, but if you have questions while you're watching this archive, go ahead and leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching through our site, just toss us an email at classes at beachcation.com. And we'll get back to you with an answer. Yeah, let's get into the video. I didn't stamp the crown well, so I didn't even bother with it. The wand might be my most favorite. The, the actually, wand is so cute. It's kind of perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. And then over here is just um, the circle with some crystals in it. It's kind of like a chakra thing right down there. Yes, I love that. Um, I don't know if you guys can see if it's kind of dark, but uh, there's the coffee cup with a little green in there. I'll turn it to the side so you can see the colors a little better. So here we've got, look at this little bubblegum machine, but it's the mason jar with the different colors. It is, isn't it fun? I love that. Now the sizes you guys on the setters are 2.6, someone was asking, and 1.8. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's for the 2.6 and 1.8 flat back crystal. So let's get set up here. I've got my block on my pad. Um, this is just to put the glue on. I like to have it close by, just any piece of paper. Oh, okay. So let's do, um, this is a piece of scrap that I have. And let me, let's do the heart stamp, the big heart. So I'm just going to stamp it on here, and then we're going to add some crystals. What do you think? Let's do it. Let me try not to hit the camera because it's right in front of me. That's cool. good. So I just want to point out what I did with the multiple wax. I wasn't just doot, 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 doot. I was actually doing what we call the tilt and tab, but it's very subtle. You don't, settle, subtle you don't really see it. So I'm just sort of shifting teeny, teeny bits and hitting it at each time. When you do the tilt and tap, what I want to point out is you're not hitting it at the angles. You hit directly on top with every single strike, even though you're slightly tipping it directly on top. And don't over tip. I'm exaggerating so you can see what I'm doing. But do, 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 you saw how fast I did that. And that looks like a really good impression. Looks great. Right. So where should we put the crystals, Mel? What do you think? I just kind of like the idea of doing like three in right inside. Right and inside. Then, right let's in, do two different. Let's do the two sizes, so it can be like. I like that. Yeah. You're big and you're little. Yeah. I think it'd be so cute to do like birthstone ones like that. So this one is the two point six. Let me hold them up so you can see the difference between the two. They're only slightly different in mm -hmm. size. Let me try to get some zoom action on that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stamp it, but my hammer and my hand are going to hide the camera for just a second. And this one, I'm going to give it a really good whack. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. And we'll just do one right to the side of it, like that. Sometimes with the little one, if you hit too hard, the metal sticks to it. Like, I'll pick it up, and oh. it'll have the metal on it because it's so deep, which is great. Now, remember, you're going to get this look on the back. That's just displacement of metal. There's really not much you can do about it, especially when you are displacing this much metal. As far as the scratchiness and the rim of the heart that you can see there, I could have lined my block with something, and it would have, it would have taken care of that. Love it. All right, let's get everything ready. What color should we do? Ooh, I know you're going to want this pink. Oh, yeah. Stacey had mentioned this would be like a mommy and a baby, and I do think that's a cute idea. I mean, you could do Super cute. Uh, big sister, little sister, or mommy and baby, birthstone. It's just so cute. It's so cute. So I always put at least a few crystals out in case you one drop fine. one or you launch one or something, and they're really easy to pick up and put back in the bag. Okay. So what we're going to do is put a little dab of glue inside of that, and once the glue's in, I'm going to use a katana, touch it lightly, and then just sort of place it right there. Wow, you made I that know, look really easy. I know. So then after you have the glue, I mean after, so you're, we're going to do glue, we're going to put it in, and you can tap down with this. You can't see because my hand's holding, and now I pulled it out, but this little guy has a little circle indented in the top, so it goes kind of right over the point of the crystal. And it helps you to, I'm going to take that guy off. 
what I do is I hold the crystal down with it and I kind of wiggle it around a little to make sure it's in the divot because oh, I've had right. that issue with my eyesight where I think it's in, but it's not. And so if you hold it and you're rocking it back and forth a little bit, you'll feel it hit the edges and you know it's in. That makes sense. Can I ask you this? If you were to oxidize or darken the heart, would you do it before you put them in? Thank you. Absolutely, I would. And I've made that mistake before. Thank you for saying that. Because what will happen is, I mean, sure, you can do it after. But let's say I had a big one right here. It's really close to the edge. And then I got the Sharpie or the oxidizing solution. Then I hit the crystal, blah, blah, blah. So like on all of these, I stamped them all oxidized him or moxidized him whichever way I went with polished then added the and crystal. then yeah so you can you can put the divot in anywhere mm -hmm. in there um because it doesn't matter if you get the black inside the crystal you're gonna cover it up or inside the divot that's right okay so a couple tricks with the hypo cement it's got this little applicator needle thing and it's very small Sometimes when you take it off, the glue already starts oozing out, which you can kind of see. You want to wipe it off and get rid of that. Pull this down just a little. So that you don't end up putting too much glue, like you can see all these lines of glue here, mm -hmm. inside of there. And see, it's already coming out again. So depending how hard you squeezed it in the last <laughs> couple days, it'll continue to ooze out. So you want to do that. I'm going to practice putting it back in for you. So sometimes it's hard to get it in the little thing, especially when you're standing over it in a weird angle and you don't have your glasses on. If you're missing it, you know, wipe it off. So what happens for me is if I am putting glue in my thing and then I go to put the lid on and I can't do it, I just put it aside. Put the crystal on because you don't want to, you know, miss the glue oh, yeah. drying. And then pick it back up and put the thing on later, mm -hmm. right? Because it's really, really tiny. Another thing is when you put this back on, let's see if I can get down and get in there. You want to make sure that um, there's not a bunch of glue. See, that's why I'm not able to see it. There it is there. That was amazing, though. I don't think I could have done that on camera. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> so see what's happening here with the glue bunching up? Grab mm -hmm. a tissue and wipe that off really quick before you close it and are done for the day. It's not a big deal. When you go to open it, it'll be kind of like clumped up. Sure. And you can wipe it off then. But it's just best to keep that clean. Okay? That makes sense. So let's go ahead. I'm just bending down to see how much glue is coming out. And I'm just going to put a little dot there and a little dot there. That's all it takes. Oh, I love it. Let's pray that I can get it in that little hole. Hey, look at that. I almost always just stop and put it aside because I can't. I mean, it's just too much it's pressure. Really hard. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the blue. Just going to pick it up and lightly, I can kind of like hit it against the edge and wipe off, right? Oh, okay. And then with this guy, just press it down. And now the pink. See how easy? I'm not pressing hard at all. I'm just, beep, a little light. And then it looks like that guy's not quite in there. So one there tip is like a little wax kind of tip, and then the other tip is just metal that is That's pressing exactly it down. That's exactly right, yep. And the metal thing is like a little tube, so it goes right over the head of the crystal. Oh, okay. So it got, that's why it kind of holds it. So I just wanted to get close there. So with the glue, I don't have any tissues here, but you can wipe it off at this point. Don't be tempted, like I sometimes do, to wipe it off with this. I would be tempted. Because then you'll get glue all over this. Okay. So have like a pin or a tissue or something that you can just go whoop, whoop, and wipe it off. Even. Toothpick is a great idea. Um, sometimes when you wipe it off with a tissue, it like smears it, and then you just have to polish it off like you would an oxidizing solution. Mm -hmm. So uh, not that difficult, right? Like no. it's pretty awesome. I would give this about twelve hours to set. Oh um, wow, twelve hours! So definitely overnight. Might as well. Yeah, I mean it dries really quickly, but um, with these guys to test it to make sure I got everything correct after I glued them in, and it'd been a while. I just like dropped them a bunch of times to see if the Oh. If the crystals would pop out and, and they, they all stayed, so that's a good sign. So when answering the question, when and how do I add flat back crystals to bent metal, I decided to mostly test it on a ring because that's the most drastic curve, right? Does yes. that make sense? Yes. It so bends the, mo bends the most, right? Whatever it does here, if it's acceptable, it'll be even more acceptable on a cuff because on a cuff, the curve is so much bigger that it's not going to cause such a drastic effect to the divot, which is what we're concerned about, that would be on a ring. So that's why I'm kind of sticking with a ring for my example. 
So this is a wrap ring. It started flat like this, exactly like this. This is aluminum. And I actually stamped it all, including the divot, when it was flat. And then I shaped it, because that's our concern, right? If you stamp it and then you shape it, does the divot stay round? <laughs> or does it turn oval? Or does it completely distort? So in my playing around, in this example and a couple others, when I stamped it and curved it, so let me back up, I just forgot to say one thing. I divoted, I stamped my uh, lotus, and I oxidized and polished the whole thing, and then I shaped it. When I shaped it, the little ovals, or the little divots, did go slightly oval, but not in a way that I thought was a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. So your option is that, to stamp first and then shape, or stamp the divot after you shape, which we're gonna cover in a minute on how to do that on your ring mandrel. But I wanted to demonstrate that um, with these guys and take a look at really how severe it is, okay? Make it seems sense? like it would be easier to stamp than bend. Am I right or no? Uh, yes, Okay. totally. Because once you get it on the ring mandrel, it's a little harder to get a very accurate mm -hmm. um, impression, whether you're doing a stamp or the crystal setter, mm -hmm. when, when everything is flat right here on your uh, bench block. It's way easier. So let's do this. Uh, I've tried all the metals and they all really came out the same. Oh, so I just want to say that in case anyone's like, well, you showed us on aluminum. Is it the same on pewter? Or is it the same on sterling? And, and, and yes, it, it came out the same. So this is sterling. This is aluminum bracelet actually that I cut. This is pewter. This is aluminum. Um, I was wondering if the depth of the divot was going to make a difference in how distorted it got, and I didn't find that it was. Oh, wow, okay. So I'm not going to demonstrate on all of these for you guys. Um, do your own experiment at home. You may find something different than I did. I played around, and this is what worked for me. Um, the sterling is harder metal, so my uh, when you're setting a crystal in there, you have to hit this harder to make a deeper impression. Usually, if you're working on sterling with the crystal setter, your little divot's going to be a little more shallow. Whereas on the aluminum or pewter, it goes it goes deep. This is a ready-made ring, and we're going to talk about that um, after we do this guy. Okie dokie. Would you say the pewter is softer than the aluminum, too? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And remember, wherever you get your pewter and aluminum, if, um, it's always going to come from different companies. So pewter and aluminum are very soft, but they have the ability to be hardened. So you might be buying aluminum that's really hard. Like mm -hmm. our keychains, they're they're really hard. They're you can stamp on them, but it's not like butter like this. So mm -hmm. you always kind of have to test it out and get a feel for um, how it's working. Let me toss down that volume there so it stops. Oh, there we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just do a little divot in this guy with both the sizes, and then I'm going to bend it and we'll take a look. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's a little 1.8. I'm going to put that, I'm going to go in a little bit, because sometimes you don't get the end as curved as you want, but I want to be like on the most drastic part. There's my little divot. Mm -hmm. That's pretty darn, darn deep, actually. Here's my other divot. Let's just do a few more where I go like... If you were to turn it around and hammer it with a plastic mallet, would it undo the divot, you know? Um, no, it would definitely, well, okay, so look at it from the side. The mm -hmm. divot isn't protruding through, mm -hmm. so you can't push it back. Oh, okay. And it's not protruding through because it was on here. It looks like it's like, ah, but that was like, you stopped me. So it basically just, well, that shows you why this is distorted here and why the whole thing curved because it pushed the metal somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It pushed it out this way. It has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. It kind of flattened it for sure, like squished it but it has to push it somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted to flatten that and you had a plastic mallet, you know, you just go back like that or... Oh, okay, that's cool. And it doesn't it doesn't really change the divot. Right. I love yeah, it. It doesn't. Okay, so there we have that. I'm going to, um, like I said, do an extreme curve. So I'm going to use my large wrap and tap pliers. And let's curve this and see what happens. So I'm going to go on the middle step and just really push hard there. So let's say I was making a ring, and this is a pretty medium-sized ring. Let's take a look at what happened to the divots. Meow. Like those sound effects? Mm -hmm. They did not really um, mm -hmm. morph that much. I'm so surprised. Yeah. They hardly distorted. They really didn't, yeah. Yeah. 
You can stamp first and distort it, um, I mean bend it, and it won't be extreme. If you want, we can, I'm just going to straighten this out so I can work on the other side. Why don't we do an even smaller mm -hmm. curve? Now, you do not want to glue the crystals in and then bend it, right? Because I've seen people ask that. For sure. Okay. You do not want to do that. Because they're going to be popping. They're going to be popping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let's <laughs> talk about that. I'm so glad you brought that up. Because not only will you not be able to bend it, because you won't be able to grab it mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. your, with your pliers, the glue that you're using is probably going to dry very stiff. So when you bend it, it's going to crack it. Mm. And then off goes your ring. Um, so let's make an even more drastic, trying to get it to go oval here. Mm -hmm. And it's just not, maybe oh, a little slightly. Bit, maybe. So what happened when I did this ring, I did have one that went slightly oval. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it just, it, it, it makes it an oval. It takes a circle and it makes it long. Mm -hmm. In that process, it doesn't make it more narrow. So the crystal still fits. It still fits great. It just, if you hold it, it goes, duh, 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 duh. it wobbles a teeny bit back and forth. But once I glued it and looked really closely with it. my glasses on, I couldn't see the edges and it was still in there. It's not like I have a crystal set with this big blank space of divot on either side. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So, I mean, to me, this kind of tells me, all right, I, I, I think I can do this. I think it's fine to stamp first and then set it. And that's what I did with this ring. And I'm trying to see if any of these came out slightly oval shape. I mean, we can try to zoom in. Tracy's wondering, have you made a ring with crystals and then worn it for a while? How do the crystals hold up? Like, so I've not, I've not done that. Um, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. I would say, as always, it's going to, it's going to depend on how much you're wearing that ring, how much you're washing your hands with that ring, mm. as well as um, how deep the divot was. So that's kind of the key. Mm -hmm. If you made a really deep divot and you set that sucker really deep in there, that's going to give you more security. So um, with this bracelet, I, I did exactly like we just talked through with the ring. Look at all the comments are coming up. Oh my God, oh, mm -hmm. I love it. I love, love it. Um, it was flat. I stamped it with the setter. I shaped it. And then I, in order to hold it, I used a little tip from our friend Aubrey Campy. Shout out to Aubrey, who in the group was talking about how she was able to hold it. She used a bowl of rice and placed it in here I so that while that. you're doing your like placing of the crystals doo, 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 in your glue. You don't have to hold it. Yeah. Now let's talk about setting a crystal in a ring that's already made. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, you're going to need a ring mandrel because you need something to support the ring on the inside, just like with stamping, so that when you stamp it, the impression goes into the metal. If you just obviously you stamped it like this, just going to smush up your ring. So if that's the case, you're going to need a ring mandrel. I like to put my ring mandrel directly on my sandbag. Like, I totally nestle it in there. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, really does a good job. We also have a ring mandrel holder. I actually take my hammer and, like, really settle it in there. Because if it needs to settle, you don't want that to happen while you're stamping. Oh, that's a really good point. Because you won't get a good impression. It might jump. It's bad news. Setting a crystal on a ready-made ring is just like stamping on a ready-made ring. You know, you need to have it really nicely snug on your ring mandrel. You're going to hold this here. I actually, when I stamp or do this on a ring, I go kind of light at first to make sure it's like in there and then give it a good one. Because if it has to settle more and you just go big, it just, the whole thing might go down. Oh, uh, okay. So, do you see that? Kind of how that sounds. Yeah. Went? Um, it's going to take a little practice to get like it exactly centered if that's your goal. So make sure you have some metal that you can practice on. Yeah, Aisha had mentioned this makes stamping so much uh, softer sounding too, doing it into the For sandbag. Sure. And it really is. Like, yeah, I mean, it's not metal, loud at all. At the metal mandrel holder, which is also a great tool if you have it. Like, it's awesome, but it's loud. Okay, so this is pretty. <laughs> Just what shut Cody up and say? take my money. <laughs> <laughs> shut, shut up. I love the. Um, the little gift that people, they use it a lot in the group. It's funny. Of that baby, like it looks like a baby from like the 30s just chucking money out the window. <laughs> it cracks me up. Um, okay, so this is pretty straightforward, right? But what I, I really, really want to talk about doing this on a wider ring. 
So oh, this yeah. is a ring that was, I just used um, a piece of scrap. This was a um, bracelet, the end of a, like a bracelet blank, and mm -hmm. I cut it like whatever, that's ugly, but pretend like it's amazing. <laughs> now when you put this on here, you pull it up to as snug as it is, but it's going to be hitting the metal really tightly, it's not focusing, there we go, um, at this end, mm -hmm. because let me... Let me see if I can. Try oh yeah, you can see. There's see a lot the gap of, there. There's a hole because yeah. this is a tapered mandrel. So stick with me here, guys. This is tapered mandrel. So whatever you go to stamp over here or in the middle, the metal's gonna have to push down a little bit, hit the mandrel, then impress mm -hmm. because it's tapered. Mm -hmm. um, the mandrel's tapered, and this is wide. So it's really only connecting with the mandrel on this side. That's why thinner ones are better. If you can get a stepped mandrel, uh, that works well. I just want to point that out. It's not not doable for sure like you can still do it but that's definitely an instance where I'm going to try to uh, zoom in on this a little bit where I'm not just going to come in with the hammer and just whack it I'm going to go kind of soft because the metal needs to settle to the mandrel and then the impression will happen mm -hmm. so if I want to go dead center there plus did you see it's still settling in my in my um, sandbag because I picked it up mm -hmm. Wow, that looks quite good. Yeah. But if I try to stamp it out here, mm -hmm. it's going to flatten the metal and distort a little bit. So if that's the case and you're doing like one on this side, one on that side, do yours here. Turn it, it around. Do it over there. That makes sense. And I'll bet you if it's thinner, like that looks like it's about 16 gauges. But if you were working on something that was like 20 yeah. or 22. I mean, you can see how it distorted it already. Yeah. So, but that's okay because afterwards I can go back through with my nylon hammer and get it back into shape. It's not going to mess up your uh, little divot. But it definitely advocates for, if it's possible to do it flat, it might be easier on, oh, the, on yeah. a wider band Absolutely. if it's not already soldered, right? Yeah, agreed. So this guy, um, I had shaped it. I did all the stuff, right? I did all the stamping and the divot and then shaped it into this wrap ring, um, sized it on here. Remember when you're messing around on here, this is a really wide band. So I would, like make sure it was round there, tap, tap, tap with my plastic mallet, flip it over. Make sure it's around here. Do, 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 do. Everything's great. It's the size I want. I'm now going to go ahead and glue the crystals on. Can you stamp on, uh, stamp on your wrap and tap was a question. I was actually looking at that yesterday. Remember, I was like, can I do it? And I was, I was holding it. You kind of can. Like, if it sits perfect and you can get it to like, go in there, right? Like, mm -hmm. why not? As long as this is touching straight down, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you definitely, I mean, that's a great question and play with it because if you can get that settled and really sturdy and this metal is touching the barrel exactly how you want it, um, do try it. All right. We will see you soon. Thanks everyone.